Let's create this shockwave effect using Unreal Engine Niagara FX. To create this effect, we need a material from the Unreal Engine Starter Content Pack. To edit your project in Content Browser, click Add and select Add Feature or Content Pack. Here you can select Starter Content and import them to the project. In your Content Browser, right click and select Niagara System. Let's create an empty system and call it NS Shockwave Tutorial FX. NS for Niagara System. Open it. I will disable the environment from the preview. If you don't see this preview scene settings window, go to window and select preview scene settings. Here I toggle off show environment and darken the environment color a bit. Right click and select add emitter. I will select directional burst template. This will give us a good starting point. Hit F2 and rename the emitter to energy burst. Go to spawn burst instantaneous and increase the spawn count to 500. Now we have 500 particles bursting out in the first spring. Let's turn off gravity and drag for now. Our particles are shooting in this direction. That's because of this add velocity module. Let's delete it. Click on this plus icon and add shape location module. This controls the initial distribution of the particles. The default is a sphere. I change it to ring. Reduce the size to five. Now, I want these particles to shoot outwards. For that, click on this plus icon again and search for point attraction force. We get this error message. Click fix now. That will add this apply initial forces module to the emitter and fix that issue. This point attraction module attracts all particles to one point. To see it clearly, I increase the ring radius to 100 again. But I want the exact opposite of this. I want to push these particles away from the middle. For that, I set this value to negative 50 and reduce the ring radius back to 5. In our starter content, under particles materials, we have this smoke sub UV material. I will modify this and use it in our effect. Drag the material to our Niagara system located folder and select copy here. Now rename that copy to m underscore energy smoke. Open it. Here it is using particle color and this sub UV texture to control the color and the opacity. I want this material to be emissive. So hold control and drag this connection to emissive color. Save the material. Now in our emitter, inside sprite renderer, select that material. To see it clearly, I delete this scale sprite size by speed module. Back in sprite renderer, change the alignment to unalign. In initial particle settings, change the sprite size mode to random uniform. Increase the sprite size to 10 and 20. Since we have a sub UV material, in sprite renderer settings, I change the sub UV settings. This texture is an 8x8 eight eight grid. Add that here and toggle this blend option. Now in the particle update, add sub UV animation module. Select the sprite renderer and set the start and end frames to 0 and 63. Because this sprite sheet contains 64 sprites. Now we have this smoke looking wave. To add random starting rotation here in the initialize particle module, I set the sprite rotation mode to random. To rotate this sprite with time, in particle update, I add sprite rotation rate module. Click on this arrowhead and select random range float. Set the mean to 50 and max to 45. Enable the gravity force and set it to something like 15. This will make the sprite go up slowly. 
enable the drag and set that to 1.1 and 1.5. This will add some resistance to our particle movements. To change the scale with particles edge, add scale sprite size module. Select this curve shape and change the first point value to something like 0.5. Then adjust the rest of the handles to make the curve look like this. To add some noise to the movement, add curl noise force module. Set the noise strength to 25. Select scale color and change the alpha curve like this. In initialize settings, I set the RGB value to 2. This will increase the strength of the emission and add some glow to the particles. You might have to change this to a higher value depending on your scene. I give this a blue color. Play with this alpha value to get different transparency. Go to emitter properties and change the calculate bounds to fix and sync target to GPU compute sim. This will use the GPU for this simulation. Now to see the effect on our level, drag and drop the Niagara system to the scene. Here in the details tab, you can use this auto activate button to replay this particle effect. Although I want this particle sim to run once, here in the emitter state, I set the loop behavior to infinite and duration to 2 seconds. This will loop our particle scene every 2 seconds, which will help us to visualize the particle effect clearly until we finish making it. Now to the second burst of particles. This will be very similar to the previous one. We just have to change few values. Ctrl D to duplicate the emitter. Rename it to energy burst wider. I know I'm the worst when it comes to naming things. Reduce the lifetime to 0.5 and 1. Click on this icon to isolate the emitter. Reduce the particle size as well. Increase the ring radius to 10 and increase the point attraction strength to negative 100. In scale sprite size, I change the curve like this. Decrease the color alpha. Disable the isolation. That's it for this emitter. To create the bursting lines, I duplicate the previous emitter once again. Call it burst lines. Isolate it. Now we need to reset a few values. Delete the sprite renderer and add it again. This will add the sprite renderer with its default values. Delete sub UV animation module. We no longer using that material. Now in the initialize particle settings, I change the size mode to random non-uniform and set both min and max x to 1. Then in sprite renderer settings, change the alignment to velocity align. Reduce the ring radius to 5 and attraction force to negative 80. In scale sprite size, I change the mode to non-uniform curve. This gives us the option to scale the x and y separately. You can use these two icons to isolate each axis curve when editing. I set the starting value of x to 1. This will make sure our x scale will not change with time. For y, I change the starting y to 0.1. This makes the particles look like they are stretching with time. Delete the rotation rate and curl noise modules. Decrease the gravity to 5. Reduce the minimum drag to 0.8 and reset the initialized color alpha. Let's stretch these a bit more. Disable the isolation. In our first emitter, under sprite renderer, I change the sort order to 1. This will render this emitter in front of other emitters, making it more visible. Now to the final emitter. Duplicate the previous one and call this one sparks. Isolate it. Decrease the number of particles to 200. Increase the lifetime to 1 and 2 seconds. 
change the size mode to random uniform and decrease the particle size to 0.25 and 1.5. In renderer settings, change back the alignment to unaligned. Decrease the attraction strength to negative 50. Then in the particle spawn section, I add add velocity module and give this particle a set velocity of 80. This will add an initial force to make them go up while bursting. Now to make them drop, I change the gravity to negative 200. You can see they are bursting up and then dropping back due to gravity. Decrease the drag a bit. To make these particles collide with the ground, I add collision module. Set the bounciness to 0.4 and decrease the friction to 0.05. In scale color, scale RGB, change these XYZ vector values to a float by using vector from float. Then change it to a curve by using float from curve. Now change the curve to something like this. This will reduce the strength of the particles with their age. In the viewport, you can see these particles bouncing on the floor. Now I want to cast some lights on the floor. We can use a separate emitter for that, but here I use our sparks emitter. Add a new renderer, this time light renderer. This will give us an error because this only works when using the CPU. So change our emitter back to CPU. In the light renderer, uncheck this use inverse square law to see the light casting clearly in the viewport. I enable inverse square law again. You can keep it if you like the previous results. And here is our final effect. As I said before, I only want this shock wave to happen once. I don't want it to loop. So in all of our emitters, under emitter state, I set the life cycle mode to use system. Now in the system settings, under system update, I change the loop behavior to once. Right now I set it back to infinite just to show you guys the final effect more than once. And just like that, we have our shock wave effect. To finish things off, back in the editor, pick a good frame of our effect and click on this thumbnail to generate a thumbnail for our Niagara system. So that's it, that's our shock wave effect. Before I go, huge thanks to these amazing individuals for making these videos possible. So, hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HelloFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next part of the Niagara FX series drops. Until next time, 